welcome. Thank you for, for making your way to, to the forum. I see a lot of familiar faces, and I think the best compliment are the return customers, right? So thank you so much for being here. We're talking about a, a very, I, I think, invigorating, um, really uh, more than thought-provoking, but an exciting topic today. And uh, so I, I welcome the expertise of our panel. My name is Anne Marie Schneider, and I work with Michigan State University's Institute for Public Policy and Social Research, along with Doug Roberts and a few people in the back, Kathy Cusick, Cynthia Kyle, Millie Rojas, and you know I'm going to miss someone, Andrew Roth. There you go. And Jess. <laughs> so we make a, a mighty team. Uh, Ipsr has been doing this for about 20 years now, a little bit over. And so um, some of you, I think I saw you, saw you at the very first one, and I'm, I'm happy for it. We're talking about creating Michigan's innovation culture. Ipsr's, this is Ipsr's um, forum series, the third in a series for this year. And we really want to direct our thoughts toward uh, the, how we recognize Michigan's culture of innovation. What are, the, what are other states doing to build hubs for new ideas and generate innovation? Uh, what is the innovator's story? What, what are their challenges? What are the barriers to their, to their success or their more efficient, expedient progress uh, from innovation or the idea to creation and to the market. So Michigan is no stranger to innovation. I, I know everyone in this room is well aware of that. Uh, even as far back as the turn of the century and beyond, but uh, at about the turn of the century, we had Will Keith Kellogg. Uh, the name Kellogg is, is very familiar in, in these Michigan circles, who uh, pioneered the process of making flake cereal. And that was a result of experimentation and innovation after failing to make granola. So he, he was the first who experimented, or um, he had a, a whole team who experimented with corn to make flake corn. Uh, he had this great idea of providing breakfast for World War II GIs and the astronauts, the Apollo 2 astronauts. So he shipped cereal overseas and, and beyond. Um, so, so I think w when we think about innovation, these are the names that come up. Larry Page is a, a more uh, modern, more current name that we, we read about in the news. He's the co-founder of Google and, and a Spartan. Uh, his parents taught computer science at Michigan State University. He was born in East Lansing, graduated from East Lansing High School, uh, got his uh, uh, bachelor's degree in computer engineering from the University of Michigan. And so Google is, th there's no one who's not familiar with Google anymore. So that's, that's a, a real uh, strong example of technological innovation. Uh, sad to say, we recently lost William Clay Ford Sr., who was Henry Ford's grandson. He passed away as uh, recently as March 9th of this year of pneumonia. And he worked with Ford during the 1950s and the 1960s. Um, he worked through uh, the creation of the, the Lincoln Continental. Um, he worked in the auto industry in probably the most innovative of times, although we're challenging that now, uh, with the uh, air conditioning in automobiles, automatic transmissions, uh, power steering and brakes, seat belts, and the overhead valve V8 engine, whatever that is, right? <laughs> but ironically, he is most known for contributing and financing the Center for Athletic Medicine, which is a leading sports medicine treatment research institute, uh, the Henry Ford Innovation Institute. So somehow he was able to converge his, uh, his manufacturing background and knowledge with uh, the needs of, of the medical field. And so, uh, he, you know, the mind of a great innovator, correct? Well, we have a few, 
few um, excellent minds in the in the world of innovation with us today. And again, I'm, I'm just delighted uh, to have them. I'm going to introduce them in the order that they're, they'll be speaking and then just let them have the, the mic. And when they're done with their presentations, we'll take questions and comments from the audience. We'll have an exchange. And again, thankfully, we are filming. So you will need a microphone when you ask your question. Um, first spe speaking will be Brian Abraham. Uh, Brian is the Executive Director of Spartan Innovation. And Spartan Innovations focuses on creating new ventures from Michigan State University's intellectual property. We like to, to uh, keep Brian very busy. He's our in-house uh, serial entrepreneur, correct? <laughs> he has over 20 years experience in university technology transfer. He, he has um, founded and led successful businesses for a number of years. Spartan Innovations was formed to support MSU startups as a component of MSU Innovation Center, but it's also part of MSU Technologies, uh, Business Connect. Uh, there's a joint effort there in the MSU Business Relationship Portal. So following Brian will be Bob Trezais, who is president and CEO of the Lansing Economic Area Partnership. Bob is the, um, he is the um, Michigan Economic Developers Association's uh, state or top economic development performer. Uh, he was voted that in 2011, has uh, continued in that tradition. LEAP, as we like to call it, the uh, Lansing Economic Area Partnership, operates a full-scale economic development program that incorporates the tri-county area of Greater Lansing, including the Lansing Regional Smart Zone, as well as the area's business development. And tying up the conversation will be Pop Kru I'm sorry, Paul Krutko, who is the president and CEO, of course. Uh, president and CEO of Ann Arbor Spark. Ann Arbor Spark is a public-private partnership of business, government, and academic institutions. They work to create economic prosperity in the Ann Arbor region, and that benefits the, the state and the Great Lakes region as a whole. Uh, Spark also supports uh, not only startups, but more mature existing companies, and works to attract new business to the region, as do the other two. Um, in addition to his responsibilities as Spark CEO, uh, Paul is the immediate past chair of the preeminent professional economic development organization in the world, the International Economic Development Council, and he was designated a fellow member in 2009. So, let's begin our discussion. Brian? Let's... 